Hello everybody. Welcome to the Forever Lock. Welcome to the end of playthrough 21. Where after three Switch games in four playthroughs, we are back to the very, very early generation. Pokemon Blue. I've been very excited to get back to the Gen 1. I did yellow in playthrough 2, red in playthrough 5. It has been 16 playthroughs since Gen 1. I'm really excited to get back to it, its arc, its battles, its story, its mechanics, which are very different. It's this playthrough that I definitely learned how the badge boost worked. I knew it a little bit, totally forgot, still did not understand all the mechanics. But I know a decent amount now. And I intend to make use of this knowledge today. And we're probably going to need it. I decided for this playthrough, I was going to do a monotype challenge. I thought I could probably do water. Maybe I check four waters at the start and then add two. Like once I increase the level cap past Brock. But I just, I looked at it and I thought, hey, out of my first, out of my Pokemon that I can add before Brock. I have six bug types. Not exactly the strongest type, especially in Gen 1, but... Gen 1, like, Red and Blue aren't the most difficult games, especially if some opponents are... really have shady movesets, and we can make very good use of that. But with just the bugs, they don't have a lot of coverage. So I just added them, didn't really think much about strategy, just went for it. Strategy and moves came along... Um, as I played. Badge boost will come into play. Um, initially, I wasn't even going to really make use of it, it was just like double team, and then I suddenly realized, hey, why am I faster? Batch boost. I have axe items, don't think I'll use it much. Um, the main batch boost user will be Parasect with, through double team. The best move on the team easily is Spore. And once I'm faster than the opponent through like one or two batch boosts, because Parasect itself is pretty slow, that's easy, because in Gen 1 only, a Pokemon doesn't attack to turn it wakes up. So it wakes up, I spore it again. Double team a few times, set up, maybe do some damage. Oh, it wakes up, spore. We do that. Here's our team. Sting the Beedrill. With Twin Needle, Hyper Beam, Swift, and Sword Stance. Free the Butterfree, Sleep Butter, Psybeam, Psychic, and Mega Drain. We'll probably see all of those moves used. Maybe not Psybeam. Kisei Chu. The Parasect. Both Paris and Parasect have Japanese names. Kiseichu uh, is Japanese for Parasite. With Dig, Spore, Slash, and Double Team. I was debating between Slash and Body Slam. It had Body Slam before. I decided to go with Slash. Although with a Badge Boost, it might ignore that. The the Badge Boost because of Slash. Because your own boosts are taken as well from that. So we'll see how that works, but double team is a key move, just not just because of evasion and survivability, but because it activates the badge boost, and we're gonna need that against Charizard. Because I don't have anything good against Charizard. We need to go first and then spore. Um Harden, I don't think I'll use it. Kinoko, I don't think I'll use it, although Kinoko, which means mushroom in Japanese, has spore, so that can be useful, and then maybe a bit of damage, double edge. Go from there. I actually intend to use Wormy. I don't need to, but Gen 1 mechanics. <laughs> against Lance, I intend to use Wormy. I could you even use Wormy against Lorelei and be safe against one specific Pokemon, her lead, Dugong. However, I'm gonna make use of their lead, Dugong, instead to set up Sting. I'm gonna sweep Lorelei with Sting, that's the idea. I'll explain exactly how, as we go along, look at that, it's a Squirtle, now it's an Aerodactyl. Something I need to remember is every time... Uh, yeah, after the second E4 member, so that's... Bruno? Yeah, after Bruno I need to use a Rare Candy on Beedrill, and after Lance I need to Rare Candy Parasect. Because the badge boost is cancelled all of the boosts that you get um, if the Pokemon levels up. So to avoid a Pokemon leveling up mid-battle, I rare candy right before the battle. So I left two rare candies here. A bunch of healing items. Don't expect to use them much. Ether, Elixir, Max Ether, Max Elixir. 
I used a guide to find all the hidden items. Not, maybe not all the hidden items, but all the ethers, max ethers, elixirs, max elixirs, and PP ups. Use all the PP ups on Parasect, I'm pretty sure, Spore and uh, Double Team. Have X items, don't intend to really use many. Maybe an X accuracy on Butterfree, if I have a safe chance to make sure that its um, sleep powder will work. And then an X special, maybe to boost its stats and activate batch boost. I haven't been able to confirm if the X items actually activate the batch boost. I would think so. Yeah, our squad, I have, I have my sting. I like sting. Hi, sting, how you doing? Butterfree. Just these artworks. Just the, the, the sprites. It's so... Glorious. I love it. Harden. Which doesn't actually know Harden. Because <laughs> I caught it as a Caterpie. And apparently it doesn't learn Harden at level up. At all. It's just, it's a starting move for Metapod. If you catch it as a Metapod. In red and blue. In yellow, it gets hardened at level 7. Uh, probably to mimic the anime where you have the Metapod v Metapod battle in episode 4. Lovely episode. A great memory for me, uh, that specific battle in that episode. Maybe that's why Metapod learned Harden. What about Kakuna? Kakuna still doesn't get hardened in yellow. Like, if you catch it as a Kakuna, it has hardened. But if you, if you have a Weedle, it has Poison Swing and String Shot. And then it doesn't get anything as a Kakuna, no matter what level you level it up. Next move is Fury Attack, I believe, as a Beetle. If Metapod would have continued evolving to Butterfree, first move would have been Confusion at level... In this game, level 12. I think level 10 in yellow. Yeah, I think it's maybe Gen 2 where they all get Harden. But Harden doesn't actually know Harden, which is interesting. Kinoko. It could be a backup with Spore, but it's slow. Three, four times weaknesses. It's not just flying, it's not just fire. In this generation, Bug is also weak to poison. And grass is anyway, it always has been. So three, four times weaknesses. Not counting abilities that if, sort of make it a four times weakness. Purely based on type, Paris and Parasect have, are the only two Pokemon that have ever had three, four times weaknesses. And here, Wormy. Let's go fight that Elite Four. I'm not going to look at chat during the um, during the battles, but in between I will check. Sting, are you ready? Because you're going to be the one for uh, the first fight. The only one I'm kind of worried about is going to be Lapras. Because it does a Blizzard and Hydro Pump, two very nice moves. Cloyster could be annoying with Clamp, and I guess Supersonic. Let's do this. I should move my... Because it's really far in the corner. I'm going to move this emulator to right here. Much nicer to look at, yeah. You don't see me looking at the side too much. Alright! Let's get the buggies in the Hall of Fame. Let's do it for Yumi. Let's do it for the buggies. The buggies are generally pretty hard to get into the Hall of Fame, so to get six of them into the Hall of Fame at once would be amazing. It w if we get all six in the Hall of Fame, this run goes deathless, which would be my fifth deathless run, but deathless with just bugs in Gen 1 is nuts. It would also clear and they put complete three whole evolutionary families in the Hall of Fame. Paris Parasect together are a full evolutionary family. I have one three-stage evolutionary family in there already. Wismer, Loud, and Exploud, all from different runs. Kakuna and uh, Caterpie are already in my Hall of Fame, both uh, in Gen 2, in the Crystal run, so that was run 8. Beedrill and Weedle, and then Metapod and Butterfee would be added. Alright, we're gonna safely set up Sword Stands. Because Dugong is going to only use rest. The entire fight. Why? Because Lorelai's smart. 
That is the actual answer. Important trainers like Elite Four members, the champion, I assume your rival gym leaders have smart AI. If they can use a super effective move, they will. They just forget that status moves don't deal damage. And are actually super effective. Dugong has Growl, Aurora Beam, Rest, and Takedown. Two of them are normal type moves. Not super effective against the Beedrill. One of them is an Ice move, which is not super effective against Beedrill. Rest is a Psychic type move, which is super effective against the Poison type Beedrill. Except it doesn't deal damage. Clef. <laughs> Actually, I'll put an X special on. Just for uh, in case Lapras messes me up. Although I don't want to give Cloyster a move. I don't want to give any of them a move. I trained up to the levels of the champion. For Parasect and Sting, I made sure their final level up would be a rare candy. So that they have the longest time to go to the next level to make it the highest chance that they don't level up during a fight. Just using Swift to save on power points or Twain Needle and Hyper Beam, which are easily my better moves. Oh, they don't actually go down. And Clamp is annoying, because that's going to keep going. I don't mind that. Actually, yeah. Hmm. The moment I can attack, I kind of want to heal, but okay, that's good to know. I was kind of being too easy with this. Yeah, but close is high defense, even at six times. And the crit does ignore the badge boost. Okay, good to know that we'll know that for Slash. Not really a fan of this. Okay, this is not how I planned it. But yeah, should use Twin Needle from the start. Let's use a Super Potion, whatever. The moment I can select an attack, I know Clamp has ended and I'll heal. Which is now. Okay, I was being a bit overconfident with the Swift, but... The best Cloyster... No, the most scary thing Cloyster can do is crit with Spike Cannon, honestly. Supersonic Billy. Full Heal doesn't do Confusion yet in this game? Oh no. I'm on s times 4 attack. Oh no. Is there a safe way to go back out and switch? <laughs> I think I should just Twin Needle. This is suddenly really scary. I should have just Twin Needle from the start. <laughs> okay. Slow bro. Actually, yeah, I can set up on Slowbro. Because Slowbro has Growl, Water Gun, and Withdraw, which aren't super effective, and Amnesia, which is. So, I will switch to Wormy, the only other Pokemon I have that is weak to Psychic. I'm actually going to use Wormy early. And then switch back to Sting. Slowbro will use Amnesia, which is a scary move in Gen 1, but it will only use Amnesia. Because it doesn't actually have a damaging psychic move, it just has Water Gun. Why would an Elite Four have a Pokemon with only damaging move being Water Gun? Well, because Gen 1, all opponents are just the level upsets at that level. And only the Ace Pokemon might have something different. Lapras actually has a really good moveset with Body Slam, Confuser, Blizzard, Hydro Pump. Yeah, I'll set up Swords Dance, do three of them, add an X Special for Lapras. But I'm actually just going to Twin Needle. It'll be super effective here, super effective on Jinx. And on Lapras, I'll probably Hyper Beam. Although, with Four times power with Tree Needle. Assuming I don't get a crit, because a crit is actually bad with all these badge boosts. The Body Slam would have been better, definitely, on 
Parasect, but I definitely didn't realize how the badge boost worked or would help would help me when I decided to use Slash over it. Because Slash against bodies on Slash will be a little less power, but there's a much higher chance of crit. It'll crit not every time, because the low base speed of Parasect, but it'll crit almost 50% of the time. With Slash on Parasect. Blizzard Hydro Pump. I'll just twin needle. I think with a boost it should be okay. Just don't crit. If that's a crit twin needle, then that's a regular hyper beam. So a hyper beam crit would have been about a KO, but maybe not. But that would have been bad if that didn't KO, because then they get two turns. Alright, I got it. Didn't quite go as I planned, but we got through it safely in the end. That's good. Didn't get the level up, so yeah, we're definitely using that rare candy. But not immediately. We're going to use it after Bruno, just in case I use Beedrill there. I have a potion. Let me get Bruno set up. So Bruno has, is the fighting type specialist, has to rock types with stab rock moves, yet I'm using the one that's four times weak to rock. Because I feel confident that I can one-shot them. The scary thing is, is the opener. If I get the Gen 1 miss, aka a 1 in 256 chance that any move will miss, even if its accuracy is actually 100. If that happens, and then they use Rock Throw, which they will, because it's super, the only super effective move Onyx has. They hit me, not too high of a chance, because 65 accuracy in Gen 1. And then maybe they need a crit. I'm 12 levels higher. Onyx's attack stat is horrible at like 45 base. The intention is to one-shot Onyx with Mega Drain. Then set up on Hitmonchan with a few, uh, with like an X speed, an X special, and then it should be okay. And then go from there. And it could probably full X defense just in case I don't KO the second Onyx. That sounds smart. Yay, I hit. It should be good. Why am I going to set up against Hitmonchan? Because it's going to use super effective moves, Ice Punch and Thunder Punch, which yes, are super effective. But they are special moves in Gen 1. And Hitmonchan's special stat is horrible. Let me check exactly how horrible. Hitmonchan's special stat in Gen 1 is 35. It gained a bunch of special defense in Gen 2. Doesn't have it here. Alright, I'll do the X special first. Because that affects the damage from the elemental punches. Counter? That's not a super effective move. Where's the smart AI? I'm very confused. Ice Punch Thunder Punch. Mega. Smart AI? Hello? There was one thing I was wondering about, and maybe... This is related. For a few Pokemon, sometimes something will be listed as not very effective or super effective when you use a move, while it's not. And I've seen it a few times during the playthrough. The one thing I remember, I believe, is if you use a grass move against a Gyarados. Gyarados is a water type, which is weak to grass, but also a flying type, which resists grass. So put them together on a Gyarados, 
Brass is normal effective, such as Razor Leaf. It's normal effective on a Gyarados. But it will say it's super effective for some reason. Something about the ordering of the types in the in-game code or whatever. Maybe that's related here, that they... That maybe Ice and Electric don't, but Fog doesn't resist either of them. I'm very confused. There's Thunder Punch. Okay, I'm just gonna heal off of the next one. Hyper Potion. This is a lot less predictable now. More X Defense. Oh, yes, two X Defense for Pokemon. Good luck that I use it there. Psychic. Pew! Hitmonlee has Mega Kick, which is pretty scary. But we should go first now. And easy KO, super effective Psychic plus the X Special. Assuming you use the Pokemon in order, Onyx would be next. That's a scary one. Machamp does not scare me whatsoever. Gen 2, it has Rock Slide, which would make it really scary. Red and Blue, it doesn't have Rock Slide. Leer, Focus Energy, Fissure, which doesn't work because I'm a Flying type, also I'm faster. And Submission, which I four times resist. So Butterfree uses Psychic, and Machamp gets out of here. That's how we do it. We know to feed it. Next one is gonna be I don't think very difficult, but it's just gonna be a bit annoying and tedious in a sense. Agatha is the ghost type user, but really she's the poison type user because all her Pokemon are poison type. So I could use Butterfree and use Psychic. And the only thing Butterfree would be weak to on that fight would be Gulbat's Wing Attack, which in this game is just 35 base power, and Arbox Acid. And I guess the final Gengar would continue to use Toxic because it's super effective. However, uh, I'm not actually going to go in with that idea. I have Psychic available as a backup, absolutely. But the intention is to use Sting again and make use of the Smart AI. Which I'm starting to doubt if that's a good idea considering what that Hitmonchan did or didn't do. Gengar, the first opening Gengar is Confuse Ray, Nightshade, Hypnosis, Dream Eater. If Smart AI works the way I understand it, they should only use Hypnosis and Dream Eater. If they use Dream Eater, it doesn't work if I'm because I'm not asleep. If they use Hypnosis, they might miss and just skip a turn, effectively. If they hit, I just heal the sleep and they don't damage me next turn because Dream Eater. I want to set up the three Swords Dance and then go from there. As long as I make sure I heal my sleep the turn I fall asleep, nothing dangerous in this fight. Dream Eater is scary. But as long as I wake up, I'm... That's not... Where is a smart AI? I'm really starting to doubt if... I'm gonna actually look this up now. Because Lorelei used it. Encourages the use of super effective moves, even if the moves a status move. Discourages the use of ineffective or not very effective move against the target. Hmm. 
if an ultimate move is available. A game set is considered as a move to be super effective against a dual type target, even if the move deals neutral damage. Okay, so that does apply, which makes it a bit scarier. I need category three. Agatha's category one. Oh. Category 1 heavily discourages the use of non-damaging moves which, which inflict a status condition such as glare if the target is already inflicted with one. Okay, so Agatha doesn't actually have the smart AI like I thought. Not all of them have it. We need category 3. Which one has it then? Bruno doesn't have it? Agatha doesn't. Bruno doesn't. Blue does. Okay. Lorelei must. Lorelei has all of them. All the traits. What about Lance? Lance has it too. Okay. So it's Lorelei, Lance, Blue that have it according to this. Okay, so that changes the entire strategy. I can't depend on that. Also, how am I gonna take out the Gengar with Twin Needle? I'll just do it. Hmm, I think I'll just use um, Butterfree anyway. Although, actually, no, it's... Poison is weak to... Um, Twin Needle, so we're good, as long as I don't get confused. And four of them have confused, right? So I just Twin Needle. It says it's super effective, even though Golbat isn't weak to bug. Poison is, flying isn't. So I'm just gonna keep attacking until we get to Arbok, which is the only one that doesn't um, doesn't have Confuser. I forgot the rare candy. My badge boosts are gone now. Okay. Change it up. Butterfree. We haven't even used the ace of my team, but I only intend to use that against Lance and uh, Blue. Psychic. I should check later which trainers in the game have the smart AI. Because apparently there's three traits of trainers, or three special traits, outside of just using random moves. And the smart AI going for super effective moves is... a third of those groups. I do want to use Sting. If they use Glare... It should be okay, because I can full restore. If they use Screech, that's scarier. She can withdraw with about approximately 7.8% of the time. That's just a chance. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm just gonna KO from here. That should be okay. She switches while going second, which is also just weird. Not quite how I expected that to happen, because apparently Bruno and Agatha don't use a smart AI. Okay. I'll check again on that page. Lance, do you have the smart AI? Yes. Also, apparently Lieutenant Surge has smart AI in red and blue, but not in yellow. Lance has it. And also group 1 AI, which is heavily discourages the use of non-damaging moves which inflict a status condition, 
if the target is already inflicted with one. So they're not gonna hypnosis you if you're already asleep, or poison powder you if you're already poisoned. Category 2 is basically moves like Screech or Conversion or Swift. Swift? Growth, stuff like that. A bunch of stat-related stat moves. And then Payday and Swift for some reason. Um, they'll likely use that on turn 2. A move like that. That's about it. Which is a programming error in itself, because apparently it's supposed to be done on turn 1. Okay. Now we get into the two more challenging fights. The scarier ones. The supposedly scarier ones. So I forgot the rare candy on Beedrill. I don't need it anymore. So I'm actually going to use the rare candy on Kiseichu now. Sting and Kiseichu have already gone up a level. Because every bit of extra HP in Kiseichu I'll take. Like, I'm more than five levels above the lowest level now, but the intention was always use one on Sting to before Agatha to make sure it keeps the badge boost of the entire fight, and the Kiseichu, I use a red candy on it after Lance, before Blue, so I keep the badge boost through Blue, because that's the key one. Because I know where I can set up with Kiseichu against Blue. If I lose the badge boost, Charizard murders this team. Here comes one of the coolest moments in any E4. The auto walk hallway around some corners. This build up to what in the games, like if you first play through the Pokemon, is just your final challenge. No one has ever mentioned the champion. It's just the Elite Four. The number four is in it. This is the fourth one. This is that build up. And even outside of that, it's just a cool auto hallway. You're ready to lose your league challenge ends with me, Savannah. <sighs> okay. Lance, you have the smart AI. Which I can make use of on some of your Pokemon. But I need to start with something else. Gyarados will hit me. But it fails Leer because 25% chance and status moves to fail if used by the AI. We make use of this. Double team. Wait, did I not heal after using the PP ups? I tested. I didn't. Did I not Poke Center? After the test? No, it, oh, I thought it was like 18 of 24. No. Never mind, we're good. So, look, notice how I'm still not faster because Gyarados does like, I don't know, 80, 90 base speed or something. Kiseichu has 30. Notice how I'm faster now? That's the badge boost. <laughs> It woke up, it didn't attack, I spore it again, because I'm not done setting it up. I haven't boosted my attack stat. I haven't boosted any stat except evasion. Yet, as long as Slash doesn't crit, I expect a one-shot Gyarados. I have an almost 50% chance to crit, because of how crits work in this game. It's based on your base speed. The higher your base speed, the higher the chance of crit. And if you use a move with an increased crit ratio such as Slash or Razor Leaf, if your speed, your base speed is 64 or higher, it's always crit. Well, there's a 1 in 256 chance that you just skip the crit anyway, but assume crit. Like you said, his base speed is only 30, which is just under half of 64. Let's see. If it's a crit, 
It survives. Yeah, it survived. <laughs> I really would have liked to have Body Slam here. Because <laughs> against the two Dragonair, I can just use Dig. And be fine. But against the Aerodactyl, Dig doesn't hit. I have to use Slash. Which it resists. Oh no, it's faster now. I got the miss glitch. But it <laughs> got the one in 256. <laughs> Take that. We both got the one in 256 miss. Actually, no, they might not have because I'm on six double teams. I forget that that's why I even put double team on the on Kisage in the first place. I thought Spore to keep them asleep for a few turns. I can double team to just be a lot safer. This is honestly the scariest Pokemon. Or you could argue it's Gyarados. But even Aerodactyl, really fast Pokemon. I'm faster because of the badge boost. Slash. Please don't crit. But even with not a crit, it's gonna survive. That's not a crit, I think. Yeah. If I crit... That's... It's only half the damage of that. I didn't crit. But they Hyper Potion. Of course they did. But they only have one Hyper Potion per Pokemon. Okay, so just don't crit twice. Ah, oh, woke up. Okay, we Spore. <laughs> we Slash. No crit! You can crit now, Kisechu. It's okay. No crits? I like it. Dragonite. I, um... Remember how I said I was gonna use Weedle? <laughs> I didn't mean, oops, I'm gonna use Weedle against Lorelei because I made a little mistake. No, I was gonna use it against Dragonite. And this is why I wanted to make sure the smart AI wasn't Lance. The first example I ever got of smart AI was Lance's Dragonite. Would have worked against Dragonair too, but um... Yeah, I'm only gonna use agility and barrier. <laughs> I can safely poison sting this thing. And it's gonna take forever, but Wormy is gonna fight a dragon. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this and send it in the forever like this. It would be great if we could poison the Dragonite, because that would very much limit the time we have to spend in this battle. Especially now that he's using barrier. Because that's going to mean less damage. What's the chance of poison sting poison in this game? Is it 10% or 30? It's one of the two, I think. There we go. That's definitely going to help. He could still have a hyper potion. Well, he could use it once... The way the AI works with potions, if they are below a certain HP threshold, which for most trainers with items like Hyper Potions is 20% or lower uh, of its max HP, and then they have a certain chance to use the item. And last chance, 50% chance. So once it hits below 20%, Lance has a 50% chance each turn to use the Hyper Potion. And there's, like, uh, Bruno, I think, had 2x defense per Pokemon. And he has a 25% chance each turn to use an X Defend. Or Misty had like one X Defend per Pokemon and has a 25% chance to use it. Or Blaine has a Super Potion per Pokemon and has a certain chance to use it at any point. I think they just copy pasted the X Defend 
or the X item chances instead of looking at the if its HP is below a certain threshold. Critical! Okay, now they could be using Hyper Potion, which is going to make the stick longer, but the fact that the poison is really nice. Okay, just don't Hyper Potion here. Could have had him this turn. Alright, we're going to fight a bit longer, but we already have the poison. I want to be faster than the dragon. Swing shot. Am I faster yet? No. Actually, they keep they use the agility, so no way am I gonna outspeed it. This is where the two X Pokemon shines. Go worry. 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 So yeah, you could also just take a level 7, whatever, low level Zubat from Mount Moon, teach it Toxic, and just sit there. Use Toxic turn 1, Toxic it, maybe turn 2 if it misses the first time, and then just sit there, maybe use Leech Life, deal 1 damage every turn. But you'll win, because it's only going to use Agility and Barrier. Assuming they do have Power Points that run out, then maybe eventually they go to Slam or Hyper Beam, but Agility and Barrier are status moves, and... Moves like that generally, especially in Gen 1, have lots of power points. Ah, I was hoping to win with the crit. Now we're gonna win with poison damage. Wormy wins! I'm gonna send this screenshot to. Because there's a certain someone in the Forever Like Discord that not just likes crazy things, but also loves buggies. Lance has been beaten by a worm. <laughs> One more fight. Rare candy, rare candy. Need to do the rare candy. One more challenge ahead. You have to face another trainer. <laughs> the one thing that stands in the way of bugs to victory. Bugnet. <laughs> I had to come up with a good rival name for Team Bug, for Bug Squad, and it's a Bugnet. <laughs> so we have to beat the Bugnet. <laughs> the Bugnet brought Bird, the Bugnet brought Fire Breathing Dragon Thing. <laughs> Kisechi, one more level up. Anyone need potions? No. Turns out we didn't need all these. Items. Max either on Wormy, on Poison Sting because you totally deserve it. And then just Max Elixir on the three that actually battled. Sting. Free. Kisechu. And then because we use the String Shot, Ether on Wormy, on String Shot. To make sure everyone is okay with this. Full power points were okay. Kisechu, you're ready. Because you need to do this. And I'm going to send you in against the Pokemon that's going to four times super effectively hit you. <laughs> okay, I'll check one more time. Blue... Starts with just at stage 1 AI and then one, has 1 and 3 from there onwards. Blue has a 12.5% chance to use a full restore if he's below 20%. Oh, there's a lot more to this. I'm gonna read into this. I like it, but that's for later. One and three. That's yeah. That's the one. I, I can just do this. 
I started with Bulbasaur. Because I had Charmeleon and War Turtle still as an open slot in the Forever Lock. And I didn't want to be forced to take them. I wanted to keep them for a Let's Go playthrough in the future. So I was forced to take Bulbasaur to avoid that. And so I could have taken Squirtle and just immediately killed the Squirtle. But I wanted to properly consider this run Deathless. So I chose Bulbasaur and realized very quickly after Wait, that means they have Charizard. I would have really liked them to have Blastoise or Venusaur. Especially Venusaur, because I could just twin needle it. Four times super effective. Okay. One more. For Deathless. Bug Squad. I'm nervous for this, because this fight is scary as heck. I have zero answers to Charizard if it hits a Fire Blast. At least it's Fire Blast and a Flamethrower, so it can actually... It has a higher chance to miss. I'm really trusting the badge boost here. I'm really trusting it. But to set it up... Parasex fighting Pidgeot. With two damaging flying moves. It has three, but only two of them are dangerous. I want to get that speed first. Sky Attack is a two turn move, so I can always spore before it hits me. Actually, actually, something I just realized. Is Sky Attack interrupted if it falls asleep? Or the moment it wakes up and it can do something, it uses it again. Sleep, freeze, binding and flinching will pause but not disrupt the duration of sky attack. So if it attacks, it will instantly sky attack. Hundred forty base power. Stab flying. Pidgeot needs to die. Or I need to be faster. X speed. I'm just gonna do two X speeds. Because I can then spore the if it wakes up. I'm faster, okay. I did not think about this earlier. That would have been scary if it instantly woke up. And I wasn't faster yet. I just need to make sure I spore if it wakes up, because it has a sky attack ready. And if it hits through my double teams, I wonder if sky... Yeah, actually, I get defense boost now as well because of the bash boost, but if that crits... That's a dead Parasect and a really hard champion fight all of a sudden. And I'd prefer to just have everyone live. Take the easy way out if I can. Okay, woke up, woke up, woke up, woke up. Spore, 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 let's go. 100% accurate, sleep, move. And they can't attack the turn they wake up. It's so good. And I'm using the two Pokemon that can use Spore in Gen 1 in the same playthrough. I could have, I guess, used kept Paris for later and just used a 1x for a lot of battles. Which would have been cool in a sense, but bugs. Let's take the bugs into the Hall of Fame. Let's get three more batch boosts, get some evasion as well. <sighs> One more double team. I don't often use double team, but it's great for evasion. That's it. Slash. I wonder if stuff like X attack will even work right now. That's a non crit, we take it. We should be faster, so I should be able to just one shot everything. 
with dig or slash or whatever. But I'll just be safe and use Spore. I have plenty of power points. I use PP ups on Spore. Spore had the maximum amount of PP up, PP ups thrown at it. Because I thought, Spore, and then I want to double team, but if it wakes up, I want it Spore immediately. The Zandas will take multiple Spores just on one Pokemon. The only thing right on can damage you with is Fury Attack. It's not really scaring me. That's the one in 256. That's also scary on Charizard. I only thought about it on the Onyx at Bruno. But yeah, that one in 256 can happen, which is another reason why I should Spore. But it can happen with Spore as well. If that happens on Charizard, it's scary. Although I do have six double teams. And if they hit Fire Blast, they, they first have to use Fire Blast. They could use Fire Spin too, which is also good. They need to hit it. It's not 100 accuracy. Then they need to crit, because they have a bunch of special boosts. So the chance that they KO me isn't too high. But it's there, and it's scary. Three more Pokemon for Deathless Bug Squad. Spore works on Grass Types in this gen. We use it, we can only damage it with Stomp and Barrage anyway. Although it does have Hypnosis. That's a crit, so we take another turn. Okay, heading there. Two Pokemon. If this works, easy MVP to Kiseichu for this playthrough. Because of Spore, because of going faster with the badge boosts. After every 10 runs, I make a list of the Pokemon that stood out the most, that were the best, the most useful, and I choose three URs, two 1Xs, and a 2X. Which is the way you build up a regular um, team. And then... It's just the six that are most useful, the squad that's most useful, out of the templates combined. Then six Pokemon that are surprising, which don't have to be the best in the playthrough, but surprisingly good. Um, and then one Pokemon which is the MVP, and both in the first ten playthroughs and the second set of ten playthroughs, it was a 1x. Playthrough six, Pokemon White, Bulldor. Was one of the best, was surprisingly good, was the MVP. Playthrough 14, White 2. It's Unova again, Basculin. Wasn't necessarily that great, but it had one MVP moment that allowed me to survive Iris when I thought it was dead. And it was the MVP. Something really big and fancy has to happen if something beats Kaiseichi for MVP spot in the third set of 10. To take Bug Squad. Deathless to the Hall of Fame. One remains. The most dangerous Pokemon of all of them. And I sent the screenshot in the Forever Lock Discord. And then we're gonna press Spore. Took a bit longer, I thought it missed. Okay, we hit it. It stays asleep, so two hits. Assuming no Gen 1 miss, we have it. If it doesn't crit, I think we might have it one shot. Bug squad. Do it for you, we do it for the buggies. We got the crit, we don't have it yet. It stays asleep. If we hit the move, whether it crits or not, we got it. This is so huge. Deathless Bug Squad! <laughs> Let's go! And here comes the most important line of the game. Savannah defeated Bugnet. Deathless 
Bug Squad Hall of Fame! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, that feels good. Flip them from Bugs! Monotype run in a Nuzlocke with three URs! Yes, it can be done! MVP was totally Wormy? Wormy be Dragonite. And saved me from some scary moments in Lorelei. But no, sir, in, in all seriousness, Kisechi MVP so much. Deathless with Bug Squad. <laughs> Deathless with Bug Squad! Yay! <laughs> oh, when you first left for Bulbasaur, which you then put in the box and released and stuff. But you did great! You've forgotten to treat your Pokemon with trust and love. And you forgot to learn how glitches work. <laughs> Badge boost is something that you can... I didn't intend to intentionally activate. But it's so useful. I was I was gonna double team anyway. That was probably gonna be the plan. Even if badge boost weren't a thing. I was gonna badge boost off it. But that would have been a lot scarier if badge boost weren't a thing. I, I would have leveled up a lot more. Before E4. I would have grinded a lot more. If badge boost wasn't a thing. Everyone ready for some Hall of Fame music? I like Hall of Fame music. It's really cool to have Hall of Fame music. Pokemon League champions are honored for their exploits here. Their Pokemon are also recorded in the Hall of Fame. Savannah, you have endeavored hard to become the new League champion. Congratulations, Savannah. You and Bug Squad are forever locked. Hall of Famers! MVP! Kisechu! The Parasect! Free! The Butterfree! Sting! The Beedra! We didn't see him, but we got Harden. Metapod. 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 Important. Metapod. Backup Spore user. Press. 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 Kinoko. Mushroom. And then Joke MVP. Wormy. Who actually beat Dragonite. Go Wormy. Scene 140 because of all the transfers. Go fish for some marine Pokemon. No. No. I don't want to. I mentioned I like Hall of Fame music. I love Hall of Fame music. So hype. The run is deathless, but I'm gonna kill something in post game. The setup for Let's Go, because I, even if later on in later runs enough Pokemon die to open up a full team of six for Let's Go run, because I do want to do Let's Go runs as a full team of six. 
The first Pokemon I can catch at the moment is a Char Charmeleon as a Charmander right after Brock on Route 3. I want to catch a Pokemon before Brock. Well, Sprout and Oddish are optimal because they're in Route 1. So I'm gonna kill my Victory Bell. I think that was the plan to kill the Victory Bell in post game, which still counts this run as deathless. It'll say like deaths one, but it's deathless because they got the death Hall of Fame deathless. That that's the one that counts. Actually, no, it was Foul Plume that I was gonna kill. I have to check which one was in. Let's go Pikachu because that's the run I intend to do most uh, first. I don't know when I'll slot that in in the, my schedule. It depends on whenever the slots open up. I need two more URs and a 2x. And I don't intend to intentionally kill Pokemon just to open those slots up. I'll just keep forever locking for a while and then get to them eventually. But I do want to intentionally get the either Foul Plume or Victory Bell kill, or both. I'll just do one now, so I have that available. I'm the champion. You say you Oh, okay, baby! Let's see. Scyther. Are you Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee? Scyther's Let's Go Pikachu. So then we go to Kanto Route 1. Which one is which? The grass type in Let's Go Pikachu, Oddish. So yes, we would want to be killing Vile Plume, and I have a an Oddish from Pokemon Yellow in my second playthrough called Postman, which is go which was going to be my Vile Plume, but I'm just not going to have that ever evolve. I'm gonna kill it in post game but I'll do that outside of this bug squad deathless hall of fame I am so happy I'm so excited about this awesome. thank you very much for watching this stream next playthrough it's going to be Pokemon Gold, so we're going to go to Gen 2. I wonder what team I'm going to build there, I don't know yet. We'll see. Not a lot to do in post-game in Gen 1. I'll kill off the Valplume, probably do nothing else. Maybe kill the 2x, but I don't think so. That's something I'll decide maybe tomorrow or in two days when I get back to this game. For now, I'm just going to get a bit and enjoy my new Hall of Famers. Good night, everyone. Make sure you always remember that you are worth it.